The objective of SDG 13 is to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. Climate change is caused by the anthropogenic emissions of CO2 and other greenhouse gases. Scientists are calling the present age the Anthropocene, a period in geological history where humans, anthropos, and their activities are changing nature more than natural processes that have remained stable for millions of years. Climate change impacts natural and human systems globally. It will, and already does, impact people's livelihood. The 2015 Conference of the Parties, COP21, in Paris, was certainly a key milestone towards fighting climate change. The message was clear. We need to reduce global carbon emissions to keep warming below the 2 degrees Celsius threshold. The evidence for rapid climate change is compelling. In the past 100 years, the global average temperature has risen by about 0.74 degrees Celsius. In Paris, the temperature has increased by 1.4 degrees Celsius between 1991 uh, and 2000. Most of the warming occurred in the past 35 years, with 16 of the 17 warmest years occurring since 2001. The ocean have absorbed much of this increased heat. As a result, the ocean acid acidification has increased by about 30% since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. All over the world, glaciers are melting at a very fast rate. On average, glaciers have thinned by over 10 meters since 1980. In the summer 2009, the minimum level of ice covering the Arctic was 24% below the 1979-2000 average. Scientists expect the melting to continue in the coming decades. Global sea level is expected to rise between 20 and 90 centimeters globally by the end of this century. Out of the 352 natural disasters in 2009, 325 of these were climate-related. Climate-related disasters killed 8,700 people only in 2009. To build resilience and limit climate-related hazards and natural disasters, three key targets have been defined. Strengthen resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related hazards and natural disaster, uh, disasters in all countries. Integrate climate change measures into national policy strategies and planning. And improve education awareness raising and human and institutional capacity on climate change mitigation, adaptation, impact prediction and early warning. What can business do with regard to the issue of climate change? Companies can contribute to SDG 13 by decarbonizing their, their operations and supply chains through continuously improving energy, uh, energy efficiency, reducing the carbon footprint of their products, services and processes, and setting ambitious emissions reduction targets in line with, the climate, uh, with climate science, as well as scaling up investment in innovative low-carbon products and services. In addition, companies should build resilience in the operation supply chains and the communities in which they operate. Let me give you some examples of what business can do. They can source all electricity the company consumes at its facilities from renewable resources, such as wind, solar or hydro, or install renewable energy generation capacity on site. They can increase investment in innovation to improve the efficiency of the company's product portfolio and thereby enabling cus customers to reduce their emissions. They can invest in carbon capture storage technology to capture emissions produced from the use of fossil fuels in electricity generation and industrial processes, preventing the carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere. And they can also reduce emissions from transport operations. To exemplify what business can do for SDG 13 on the issue of climate change, I'm happy to have with us Hugues Chenet, um, Research Associate at the University College London and Chair Energy and Prosperity in Paris. Hugues is also the co-founder 
and non-executive director of the Two Degrees Investing Initiative, a think tank promoting integration of climate goals in investment strategies and financial regulation. Two Degrees Investing was set up in 2012 in Paris and is now also present in New York, Berlin and London. Hugh, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. You've been engaged in bringing climate change onto the agenda and, and practices of the financial markets for many years now. Could you tell us what finance can actually do for SG13 on climate change? So let me start by um, a quick reminder. Our starting point is the Paris Agreement, I would say, and we are glad to have this agreement. And it made it very clear that uh, we have a goal now, and the climate goal is to limit global warming to well below two degrees. And this is not just an energy transition. It means decarbonizing uh, our economy. So it's not only an energy transition, it's really an energy and economic revolution. And of course, it has a cost, a huge cost, and it requires a lot of money. But um, what you can expect uh, usually, I would say, for this type of huge uh, general interest long-term issues is public money and public governments making the effort. But here, the bulk of the money is expected to come from capital markets, basically. And so, because it's, <laughs> you don't have enough money in, in, in public governments' money. So it has to come from financial markets, and that's where financial markets are expected. And the responsibility of the financial system here is not just to add some, some green money, it's really to shift the investments out of brown to go to, to the green economy. So it's not additional uh, money. The question is really about shifting out of brown and going to, to green. And what are, what are the main challenges for the, for the financial markets in integrating climate change and to actually become a driver for a transformation towards a low carbon economy? I think the main challenge and the difficulty for the, for, for the finance system is to manage this very unique thing in climate change, which is uncertainty mm. and long term and forward be, being more forward looking. And so as soon as uh, climate um, issues will be understood uh, by the financial system in, in these two uh, categories and these two uh, questions, I think it's, it will be much easier. So all the question is how finance can integrate such long-term and such uncertainty uh, in, its, uh, in its approach and its decisions. Okay, so concretely, how can we integrate climate change and financial analysis? Do you have some sort of concrete examples? So there are plenty of things that are being developed because it's a very new topic, but I think what is uh, on top of the pile, I would say, is the question of scenario and how can climate scenario and energy and industrial scenarios that come with that, uh, how those scenarios can be integrated in the, the approach of uh, financial institutions. So it's all about designing scenarios, having relevant data of what can happen. Uh, I mean, data, wh what are the kind of scenarized data of the future and how those data, can, how, how those scenarios can be uh, integrated into financial analysis, into risk and return uh, characteristics of, uh, of financial assets. So it's really, I can say it again, about scenario. Okay. And so in the last few years, we've seen many initiatives that have been emerging from the finance sector. We've got the principles of responsible investment, um, Montreal Pledge, the Portfolio Decarbonisation Coalition, um, Climate Action 100 Plus. There are also divestment campaigns, um, such as the Fossil Free Campaign led by 350.org. Um, are these initiatives providing the right incentives to financial markets to integrate climate issues? So I think this is very interesting because from a point of view, you can say or you can imagine that it's only activism or good intentions. But actually, the reason why we are talking about climate and finance today is probably very much influenced uh, by those, by those campaigns, typically even from small NGOs and civil society movements. So I think it really brought the, um, the conversation at the level where we are today. So it's very important for the narrative and for, um, I would say, build the, the conversation on climate change and finance. And it's, 
So to answer your question, I think it, we are far from the objective uh, because so far the um, financial markets and the whole economy is still not aligned to the climate objectives. But thanks to those um, initiatives and campaigns, now the climate change issue is on the agenda of policymakers and uh, financial institutions related to, uh, to the funding, to the financing issue. Okay, and, and so how do financial actors, but also regulatory bodies, um, how do they respond to these um, climate-related metrics and policies? So, same, there are a lot of interactions because you have very wide variety of uh, stakeholders involved in that new discussion. But I would say the most two, yeah, the, the two main important um, events and conversation that happened today are between, um, I would say, regulator, policy makers and uh, financial institutions, which is uh, something which is quite new related to climate change. And the other very interesting point is uh, the fact that on green items, on green stuff, on climate change, now you start to have a competition between financial institutions. And it's really I think it's gaining a lot of, in, of importance and uh, it, it will probably make a lot of strategic decisions important in, uh, at the board level of financial institutions from now to the next couple of years. Uh, and things are changing thanks to that. Uh, so I think it's, uh, this competition can, can move uh, the, um, the game forward. And to finish, one final question. The, the IPCC says we're running out of time. Um, can finance really do its part of the job um, at the right pace and the right level of ambition? So it's a difficult question because some, somehow you can be very pessimistic and often I'm, I'm very often pessimistic about that. But <clears throat> the good point out of this short story we're just talking about is the fact that five years before I would not have bet uh, that so, there is so, so much uh, kind of buzz on climate and finance just because something happened. And I think, whereas it was very improbable that it would come out, finally the fact that some initiatives that we mentioned, including NGOs, campaigns, but also broader civil society and policymaker uh, appetite on, on this topic, made this happen. Finally, we have this conversation um, occurring, whereas it was really not anticipated. So I think that the positive outcome out of it. We are very far from solving the climate question, but at least we have good surprise sometimes when we just shake the right tree, if I may say so. So let's shake the right trees and, uh, and make uh, apples or good climate fall from that. Uke, thanks a lot for being with us today. Thanks a lot.